Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings to each of you. We are very thankful. Uh, it's Tuesday night. We are very excited about uh, Tuesday night teaching here here at Network uh, Believers. I'm Pastor G. Thank God I'm the proud pastor of Network of Believers. I believe God is doing something incredible at Network and you can be a part of it. We are thankful. We are thankful. I have a word from the Lord on tonight. I'm going to jump into this word on tonight. Uh, if you will, please, 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 please. If you have never shared me before, please share me tonight. Please share the word on tonight. I believe the Lord is saying something specific that it's going to uh, speak to your heart for this particular time that we're in, that we are facing. There's some prophetic things that will be uttered tonight, and I'm very excited about what God is doing. I want to pray. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to jump in the, into the word. You, you are sharing why I'm praying. Father, we thank you again uh, tonight for this opportunity again to share this word with your people, Lord. I yield myself to you. God, you can say whatever you desire to say through me. I, I am obedient to your voice. God, you can say, you can do, you can speak whatever your heart's desire, Lord. We are here. We say yes and amen. Thank you so much, Father, for the people that you have committed to here tonight. God, I thank you for the things that you're going to do in their, in their lives. Each individual that is here to hear your word, to grab a hold to faith. God, I pray that the grace would be released into their hearts, released into their minds. God, I thank you so much because it is a blessed time in you. And Lord, you promised us some things. And Lord, we believe that it is going to come to pass now. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, 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 and amen, and amen. I hope y'all can hear it. I read my shirt. It says, it's my thriving season. And I hope, thank you, uh, uh, Priscilla. Thank you so much for this for this shirt. And I hope that you feel the same way. This is your thrive season. It's by faith that it happens. It's by faith that it happens. And I need you to grab a hold of faith like you never had it before. You're going to have to have faith in this season to see these things happen. I got a lot of things going on, but I'm excited because I know what God is about to say and what he's about to do. Amen. Have you shared me? Have you shared me? Let's jump into the word. I thought I would be doing the part three of the teachings I've done Sunday and, uh, of course, last night. Uh, I have a call on my life. I have a call on my life. Uh, I will resume that uh, whenever the Lord leads me. There is still some more things that I want to share in that area. But tonight, as I was preparing today uh, and asking the Lord, uh, what should I say? Uh, thinking he's going to put some uh, final details on that. He spoke to me and said, now, I need you to uh, speak to the hearts of my people. You know, this is the time that we got to lock it in. We have to lock it in. Uh, faith believers, people of God, you're going to have to lock it in. This is going to be crucial that your relationship is up to par because of what the enemy has issued. There is this season of deception that the enemy has on his heart. And only those that will have their hearts and their ears to the mouth of God will be able to survive in this season and thrive. Not only just survive, but thrive in this season. So it's very important. It's very important that you understand. Thank you again, I said, for uh, Priscilla for giving me such a, 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 a prophetic uh, thing. Uh, but tonight we're going to uh, di uh, divert just a little bit. We're going to go move from that. The Lord spoke something to me today, today. He says, again, tell my people, do not misread the signs. Don't misread the signs. Now, what does he mean when he says not to misread. If you got some people that you know speak to people, tell them to come into the house tonight. I want to open up something. I want to go to the scripture. I want to I want to deal with some eschatological things on tonight because we got to be focused. We got to be in the know. We got to know what God is saying. If not, it's going to be extremely difficult in a time when it's not supposed to be difficult for the believer. It's going to be extremely difficult in a time that believers are supposed to be thriving. It's going to be difficult in this time that you are supposed to be thriving when you don't have a clear understanding of what the Lord is saying. So if you will, please, 
please, please, please get at least a couple of people in the house that you know are people that speak to other other people because there's something that the Lord is going to say prophetically as it relates to our eschatological view. He says, tell my people, don't misread the sign. Now, there are many of you that are listening. You are, you are watching right now. You're going to share right now. But there's others that will come in. Uh, on the replay. Sometimes people just can't come in live. They have to come on the replay. But I want you to know that there's those of you that the Lord is saying something that is unusual. You haven't heard the Lord say this. He's saying to you that you are an oracle. We spoke about it last night, that you will speak something that is relevant for the time. You will be speaking things that are relevant for the times. And it's going to be unusual because we're in a shifting season. We are, we we have shifted so drastically. We have shifted so drastically. And a lot of times we don't realize how drastic the shift has been. And so a lot of times we are dragging, we are behind, we are lacking in a bunch of areas. And it's not God's fault. It's because we have not heard. And so God is releasing those that have a word in their mouth. This is the word season. And there's a, there is a word that is coming to alert us for the times that we are in. And tonight is such a word. Don't misread the signs. Here's what the Lord said to me specifically when he gave me that title. He says, tell my people, don't get distracted. Don't get distracted by the things we see on TV. Don't get distracted by the things we're seeing on television. Don't get distracted by the things we are hearing on social media or watching on social media. Don't get distracted by the things that we hear on the radio or any other informational outlet. He says, please tell them, do not get distracted. Now he says this, he says, yes, there are calamities in the world. Yes, there are calamities in the world. There's a lot going on right now, but he says, do not get distracted by what you see on TV, here on social media or radio. Please be advised that these are tools that are sent to distract there are calamities in the world there are listen to me here's here's one of the things that he said very specifically he says yes there are wars listen and rumors of wars wars and rumors of wars but he said do not get distracted you're going to hear a lot of prophetic utterances about some things that are coming and they will be based out of what they are seeing on TV, based out of what they are hearing on TV. Now, 2 Corinthians, or oh, 1 Corinthians 2, says something very powerful. It says that we should compare spiritual things with spiritual things. We should compare spiritual things with spiritual things. Let me go there so that I can show you this text. Second, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 12. This is going to be very important because he says that there, there will be distractions that are uttered. And if my people are not careful, men's hearts are going to fail because of fear, because they don't understand the times. He says it's important that we understand the times. Here's 1 Corinthians chapter 2. It says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. We might know that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now look at this 13th verse because this is what I'm going after. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teach it, but which the Holy Ghost teach it, comparing spiritual things with what? Spiritual things. In other words, we got to be very careful that our prophetic voices are not voices that are pulled from from news outlets, uh, pulled from social media posts, pulled from radio things that we hear, and it begins to influence what we hear, and it begins to influence what we say. And we begin to prophesy out of that dynamic, and that can happen, and it happened more often than not. So he says, we got to be very careful that we don't get distracted in this season. We don't get caught up into things. We hear a word and we hearing of rumors of wars but he says do not get distracted there are calamities in the world there are things that are happening he says these events here's what the spirit of the lord says these are events to totally totally distract us and cause fear in the heart of believers i'm sent tonight to make sure that we understand this are you sharing me tonight to make sure that we understand that these things are sent to distract the believer 
to distract the believer. It's going to be so heavy on some of you that you're going to forget about the dream. It's going to be so heavy on you that you're going to forget about the promises of God. You're going to be so worried about what's going on in the world that it's going to cause depression to come. And the Lord is sending warning and you're going to have somebody speaking to your heart that is not comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. They are reading CNN. They're going to the U.S. Uh, 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 New York Times and they're pulling things out that is projected by men that don't have the spirit of God or the wisdom of God. They are just smart people into intellectual people that sing and projecting and forecasting and so what is happening the prophetic world is going and grabbing that stuff and they're beginning to utter it and so now people are afraid because we have not been in the position where we can hear so he says be very careful because this is a season of distraction we will hear things and then the enemy will take advantage of the times because we are hearing things we're hearing about wars we're hearing about rumors of wars and now we're getting the prophetic community to begin to prophesy out of these things and we got to be very careful these are tactics of satan because he knows that this is the time of release i want to say it again this are these 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 things that are happening these calamities and and then the prophetic voices grabbing the hold to it these are the the tactics of Satan, the, the deceiver. Why is he doing this? Why is he hiding it now? Why is he causing all of these things to happen now? It's because it is the time of God's release. I want to say it again. It is the time of God's release. Are y'all hearing me? This is the time of God's release. In other words, the glory of God will fill this earth. I know many don't believe it because they think too much stuff is going on. There's too many things that's happening that will prevent the glory of God. There is nothing that is happening in the world, no calamity that is happening in the world that can prevent the glory of God. The only thing that prevents the glory from being and filling the earth is when a believer don't believe. It's when a believer has heard words that change what they think of what they are hearing from God. We got to understand this. We got to understand this. So it's very important that you don't misread the signs. You don't get distracted by what you're hearing. You don't get distracted by what you're seeing. You don't get distracted by what they're saying. You don't get distracted by somebody prophesying that is not comparing spiritual things with spiritual things this is too important this is the time of the release of the glory let we have never seen it or experienced it before the enemy knows this and so what his tactic is is to use words every time war begins it is begun by a word called propaganda what does that mean the enemy start introducing words start saying things he try to overuse words because he knows that when god get ready to say something he you want the ears of the believer to be to be shut because you've heard it many of you are so disappointed by the things that you heard from the people that you heard it from you were disappointed by it. and so now when God is trying to speak to you about this next level and this thing that he's trying to include you in your ears are closed why because you've been so disappointed be very careful the enemy is trying to disappoint the people of God he's trying to disappoint he's trying to snatch things from you you many of you have been going through some so many horrific and hectic changes right now it's only the tactic of the enemy to get you in a position that you don't want to hear and the Lord says you got to hear in the season so tonight I want to deal with this I want to go into some things I want to uncover some scripture because I need you to see this and I need you to look at this very clearly listen I've been saying this and I'm gonna say it again we are going to be challenged in our eschatological view there are so many things. What is eschatology? It's the teaching or the, 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 the theology of end times, how we think this time thing is going to end. Unfortunately, the believers have been taught that this thing is going down the drain very quickly and it needs to go down the drain very quickly so that the Lord can return and take us all out of here. Well, I got news for you tonight. It's not going down the drain. The glory of God is going to fill the earth. The glory of God, like we've never seen it, is about to fill his earth because it's about to fill his people. The people of God are going to believe again. Believe again. There's a release of glory. Now, I need to go to 
Matthew chapter 24 and dig into this real quickly because Jesus is prophesying Matthew 23 and 24. It is, it is, it is called the Olivet Discord because of this thing called the war and the rumor award. And we think that this is something brand new. This is not brand new. This is something that Jesus actually prophesied to a people in his time. And we got to understand the reader reverence of the, of the scripture so we can know what time it applied to and to whom he was speaking to. That's one of the most important things. One of the keys to your understanding God moving forward is to understand that the scripture, the Bible, the word of God was written for you. Here it is. It's for your example and admonition. It was not written to you. It was written for you. In other words, there are things that are happening in the scripture to a certain people that should be evidence to us. And we got to know this to move forward, to really pull out what we are uh, supposed to hear and know from the spirit of the Lord. Now, Matthew chapter 24, because I want to deal with this, because the urgent thing that is on the heart of people right now, because we just seen a conflict, a, 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 an action that caused conflict. And it was, I believe, from China. And now we're having too many prophets words about what that signifies. Let me explain something to you. What that signify to you and to me is that the glory of God is going to be revealed. The glory of God is going to be revealed. Now, the Lord says this to me. He says, now make sure you, you, you let my people know conflicts will happen in the earth. Conflicts will happen in the earth. Let's go to the war and rumors of war. Jesus is prophesying. He just come out of the temple. If you read Matthew chapter 23, again, it's called the Olivet Discord. Technically, you go to Mark chapter 13 is there. You go to Luke chapter 21. You'll find this Olivet Discord, Discord and all of the sign optic, what we call sign optic gospels. And then you read John and he doesn't have it in John. Why? Because John's sign optic, or if you would look at it like that, is revelation, which is referencing what Jesus said in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke chapter 21. Now let's dig into that because we got to know this because of the times that we're in. The glory of God is filling this earth now the release of god's glory is filling in anybody that tell you that it's not the time of god's glory it's the time of sorrow it's the time of tribulation you got to say i'm closing my ears to that because i serve a god that's promised something and it has not happened and i'm not leaving here until it happened you got to stand on the word of god matthew chapter 24 let's start at verse number three again let's set the scene this is jesus fresh out of the temple where he is in the temple and he's going off on the Pharisees and the scribes. He's saying, you scribes and you Pharisees, you religious spirit, you the ones that kill the prophets. You are the one that caused most of the confusion. You are the ones that don't understand the word. You don't, you don't want to hear the prophet yourself and you don't want other people to hear. You constantly co accusing people. You're constantly condemning people. He's in there going off. This is the longest prophetic word in scripture. If you see Jesus, Jesus is saying to the religious spirit, he's talking about, he said, you don't have an understanding and you won't let other people get an understanding. You're standing between them and kingdom. And he's going off and then he walks out the door. I can imagine that Jesus slammed the door after he walked and then he walks up to what is called the Mount of Olives. When he get there, the disciples come right behind him because they heard him. They are like, whoa, Jesus is boldly talking to the leaders. I can't believe he had the audacity to say that to them. I can't believe he is saying that to them. I can't believe he would just say that. And they are walking up to him in amaze amazement. That's where we're going to pick this up right here. Matthew chapter 24, verse number three. Look at what it says here. It says, and as he sat up on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came. Here they come. Here they come. They were inside the temple. They heard everything he said. Here they come. Here they come. On the, Mount of the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us, Tell us, tell us. Now, please pay attention tonight. Please pay attention tonight. Please pay attention tonight. I want to dissect this scripture so that you can see this clearly. I need you to see this clearly. I want you to know what Jesus is saying. I want to dissect this so that you can cl clearly see what Jesus is saying and whom he's saying to 
whom he sent it to him and what time frame he sent it to him. So they are coming to him in private because he just walked out of public, out of a public, uh, 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 I would call it a public whooping. A, a public tongue lesson inside the temple to the religious leader. And now he walks out on the Mount of Olives and here come the disciples. They didn't say nothing while he was in the temple because they were scared. So they come to him and say, whoa, we need to know something. You said something and I want to know in detail what you're saying. That's where your heart is and that's why God is sending the word. You need to know in detail what he just said and to whom he's saying it to. Look at it. Here it is. Here it is. And, they, and he said on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, came unto him uh, privately. Uh, and here they are. They saying to him, oh my goodness, what is going on? Uh, Jesus, what did you do? Why are you saying it? Who, who gave you the authority to say this? Are y'all following me here? Are y'all following me here? This is important. The disciples are tripping because they can't believe that Jesus has got the audacity. Listen, the Lord is raising up those that are bold in this season. There are some of you that are bold enough to say exactly what God said, and you ain't going to be scared. You're going to say exactly what God is saying, and you won't be scared. Are you hearing me? You're going to say exactly what God said, and you won't be scared. He, they say it down. Tell us. Look at this. Look at what the text says. The text says, tell us, when shall these things be? When shall these things be? What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the earth? Now, here's the detail to this text. They said, now tell us, when shall these things be? Now, look at it now, because this has got to, this, you, you got to see this. Tell us, when shall these things be? The question mark is behind the B, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? And the end of the world. This is telling us that this is three different questions as Jesus by his disciples. Now, number one, he says, tell us. Now, follow me here because this is important because we got this rewards and rumors of wars. And we got to understand what Jesus was saying and to whom he was saying it to and what time frame he expected it to happen. They say to him on the Mount of Olives, after him coming out of the temple, Matthew 23, go read it in your own time. Verify this. Make sure I am telling you what the truth is. Tell us when shall these things be? What things? What things are they asking him about? Well, they're asking him about the things that he just said inside that temple. He's telling the religious people, he's telling people, he says, you have killed the prophets. I sent prophets and you never hear. You always kill. He's talking about from the blood of Abel to Zacharias. He's telling them why because that's their, that's their Bible. That's the Hebrew Bible he's talking about. The beginning uh, 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 righteous Abel to Zacharias, the end. We got to know this. We were not taught this. He's telling them about, he says, you have killed the prophet. The prophet that was sent to you to warn, you wouldn't hear. You kept closing your ears to it. So he says, because you have uh, uh, disregarded the word of the Lord, he says, your house will be laid unto the desolate. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, those that killed the prophets. How I would have covered you as a mother hen covered her chicks, but thou wouldest not. So because you don't hear, here's what is going to happen to you. He gives them a list of things that are going to happen to Jerusalem, to the people that were in Jerusalem. Then he kept it off by saying, you know, this generation won't even pass until all is fulfilled. Do you hear that? Read it in Matthew 23. He's talking to people that are in Jerusalem. He says, this generation will not pass until all of these things are fulfilled. A generation in biblical terms is only 40 years. So Jesus is prophesying and if you go study this just a little bit, he's prophesying this prophecy in AD 30. AD 30. Now, when did the prophetic word that he prophesied come to pass? If he 
he said this generation from 30 plus 40, if, if 40 is a generation, then it had to happen in 70. Well, if you read any, if, you, if I am sorry that our, our teachings don't even explore these areas. We're just into the superstition. But these things are things that we need to understand because the enemy is using our times of ignorance to cause us to be in panic mode. And every time he gets ready to prevent a move of God in glory, he'll pull something out like this and we have no point of reference to reference. So Jesus prophesies in AD 30, what happens? In AD 70, it happens exactly like he, 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 he promised, just as he promised. Now, let's go back because they say, when, look at him, when, tell us, when shall these things be? What you just prophesied in the temple and to whom you prophesied in the time frame. That's what he's asking. Now, no, they ask, and number two, he says, and they say, what shall be the sign of thou coming what shall be the sign of your coming that's an interesting question let's look at that let's let's dissect that question what is the sign of your coming now interesting enough because most of us today most of the teachers today will uh, uh, tell us that the disciples are asking him of his second coming when are you going to appear in the clouds? They say that's the thing that the disciples are asking. The disciples are not asking him about his second coming to rapture them up. You know why? Because you got to understand, they didn't believe that he came the first time. Remember when he died, the disciples went back to their occupation because they didn't believe. The Bible says two of them was on the road to Emmaus and they having a conversation. They said the one that we had thought was the savior, was not even the savior. Now that's, that's, that's a two or three years after this particular conversation. So they can't be asking him the conversation of his second coming when they have not fully embraced that he came the first time. So we got to understand what he's saying. And then the third one is the more interesting one. The third question was, and of the end of the world. Now, if you go to Matthew chapter 24, this is exactly what I am trying to express to you because we are hearing a whole lot of things now and we're referencing these texts to be the verification that the Lord is saying that he's ready to take his people out. I'm here tonight to tell you that before he take you out, he's going to take you in. I'm going to say it again. Before he takes us out, he's ready to take us in. What do you mean by that? He is ready for his glory to be revealed in the earth. Thou kingdom come, thou will be done. Here's what the Lord is saying to you. He says, if you will stop trying to make heaven your home, he's going to make your home like heaven. Hear me. He says, if you stop trying to get to heaven, he says, I'm going to make heaven come to your house. I'm ready for the glory of God to invade my life right here on earth. There are too many things that I am commissioned to do. And I want the Lord to speak to me. I want him to speak through me. And I want him to manifest himself. And so you got to get ready. We are distracted. We are hearing things. There's wars and rumors of war. There are things going on. But we got to understand what the scripture says. I just explained something to you. Now let's go back into this text detailedly. He says, so tell us when shall these things be, what you just prophesied in the temple, what you said to the Pharisees and scribes, and what shall be the sign of the outcome he was not talking about, they were not talking about a second coming because they did not, they not believe that he came the first time and of the end of the world. We're going to answer that one in, in just a second. Now look at it. I want to go to the next verse because look at this. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no, that no man deceive you. Here's what he told me today. He says, make sure my people don't misread the sign. Make sure that men don't deceive you because the enemy is using these tactics in this time to cause us to be in fear. He wants us to quit. He's saying this is quit time because it's the end of time. The Lord says, no, it's the beginning of time. Get ready for glory to be revealed in your life. Get ready. Now let's go back to this because I need to see this. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceives you. Now look at the, the fifth verse. For many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many and shall deceive me. Now I'm read that again. And many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall uh, deceive me. Now you got to look at that. They didn't say I am the Christ. 
They say, I am Christ. We, we, we heard that. We see that. But I need you to understand, this happened just as Jesus happened in the time frame that Jesus said it would happen. If you do any study, all you got to do is go back and do a little study. When Jesus spoke this in his day, there were many people that raised up that said because of the hunger of people for the Savior, because it had been prophesied by Isaiah that a Savior was coming. They didn't believe that Jesus was really the Savior because their high priest had more power and had the power to kill him. And so that's why on the road to Emmaus, they was saying we had hoped that he would be the one but he was killed by a high priest so he couldn't be the one that's why he then said to them oh fools oh fools and slow a heart to believe ought not christ to have suffered first and then into the glory in other words what you just see happen is what i told you was going to happen that's not a sorry i had to suffer first before glory come don't don't let the enemy convince you because you've seen the suffering that the glory is not going to come. That comes first. The suffering comes first. Only the people that heard the word and have stepped into faith can hear and believe that this thing is not my end. This is my beginning. These are all signs of a beginning. Now, listen, this is why example and our admonition. So listen to what the text says. Let's go back to the text. It says, so many shall come saying, I am Christ and the seed many. Look at this. Look at this. Six verse says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of war. This is the verse I'm going after because I need to deal with this. Because here's where we are getting caught up. Many shall come in my name, saying they are Christ. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. See that ye be not troubled. Listen to me. See that you be not troubled. One more time. See, because you're hearing of wars and rumors of wars. Remember, this is a tactic of Satan to scare the people of God. See that you be not troubled. See that you be not troubled. Look, see that you be not troubled. All these things must come to pass. But, here's Jesus saying, but, but, but the end is not yet. Do you see this? But the end is not yet. We have so much prophecy, so many words about this is the sign that is the end of time. No, it's not. Jesus is telling his disciples in their time, the persons that he prophesied to, that this is not the sign of the end of time. These are just things that will happen and the enemy will use these things to distract. Now, somebody's saying, now, Pastor G, Pastor G, you don't believe that there's an end? Yes, I believe it. Yes, I believe that God is coming for his people. Yes, I believe all that. But this is not the time. This is not it, my people of God. This is not it. Now, now, when, when they ask Jesus, uh, and when is the world going to end? Jesus says to them, I have no idea. Let, let me show you that before we go any further. Here's what Jesus said to them when they said, tell us when the end of the world or the end of time. Tell us when it's going to happen. Here's his reply. Look at it in the scripture. But of that day and hour, know it, no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Ain't that interesting that Jesus, God in the flesh, says that no man, not even the angels, know the end when we have prophecy constantly about it in the end times. What do you, what do you mean? Well, this is a so sad way. The sorrow and the tribulation is a sign that the end of time is here. Listen to me. If you read in Thessalonians, Thessalonians says this, Paul says this, it's not when trouble is in the land that the end of the time it is. It's when men are happy. It seems like things are well. Then he comes as a thief in the night. Chew on that nugget right there. Chew on that nugget right now. Chew, chew on that. We got to get this. I want to go to Luke's version of this particular uh, uh, teaching, the Olivet Discourse. Now look at what Luke says, verse number eight. And he said, take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and the time draw near. Go ye not, therefore, after them. Look at this ninth verse. But when ye shall hear wars and rumors, uh, 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 wars and commotions, as we're saying now, be not terrified, for these things must first come the past but the end is not by and by the end is not by and by then said he unto them nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom it's all a part of the prophetic 
kingdom against kingdom. Look at it, it said, and great, listen to this, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famine, and pestilence, and fearful sights, and great signs shall be from heaven. Do you see, look, look, he's saying this, he's saying to y'all, he's saying to us, he says, stop tripping, stop tripping. I need you to understand what I'm saying to you. This is the time of glory in the earth. Don't let our heart be troubled by what we see. Don't let our heart be troubled. So he just said, "Don't look." Let's, let's look at this again because I need you to see this. He said, "He said, he says this. He says, he says, uh, uh, there shall be wars and and rumors of wars, and like we're hearing now, commotion, just like we're hearing and seeing now on the TV. Be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not." It's not by and by. So here's what the Lord spoke to me. He says, he says, he says, these earthly conflicts. Now pay attention because this is going to be very important. These earthly conflicts that we are facing right now, and there are many commotions and calamities, are are are, are inevitable. I'm gonna say that again. These earthly commotions are inevitable. What do you mean by that, Pastor G? They will happen. These earthly conflicts conflicts are inevitable. But he says this to me. Now, I use the word inevitable. Before, when we were talking about things that, that had, as, as far as end time events before, uh, and, and, and things that are, are, are coming against the people of God, when you hear prophecy about things that, and I'm talking conflict, human conflict. I'm not talking about pestilence and all of those things. See, there are things that are, are, are imminent threats, and then there are things that are inevitable. Flesh conflict, uh, physical conflict is inevitable because the prophetic word said it. But there are things that dealing with sickness and all these other calamities are imminent threats. And the scripture says that very clearly in Second Chronicles 7, 14, that if my people would they call by my name, would humble themselves, then he says he heals the land. So that's not inevitable. That's imminent. It will become inevitable, inevitable if we don't hear the right word. That's why Satan is causing us to believe that this is inevitable so that the people of God will stop praying. That's why he's sending all of these messages because he's trying to get the intercessors to stop interceding. He's sending strong delusion because he's trying to get the saints to say, oh, well, ain't no use. This is what's going to happen. These earthly conflicts are inevitable, but they are not to be to be taken or, 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 or for us to think they serve as a prophetic sign of the end times. That's what the Lord said. He said they are inevitable. They are not to be used as prophetic signs that the end is near. Listen, listen, listen. There will always be conflict in the physical. There will always be conflict in the physical. There will always be wars and rumors of war. That's what the word is saying. There will always be wars and rumors of war. In Luke chapter 2, and I, I want to show you this in scripture, because when uh, a Jesus, when Jesus is born, who is the savior of the entire world, who is the one that served as the propitiation offer, he was the lamb. He was the slain lamb to take away the sins of the world. He was the offering that would buy us out of sin or buy us out of the wrath of God. Jesus, when he comes, that's his job. That was his job to make sure that heaven, God, and man, their breach is taken away. So that when we think about the wrath of God and him being mad because of what happened, Jesus, as Isaiah 53 says, it pleased the father to bruise him. This is what the Lord wants us to understand because Satan is using this and he, the, the conflicts and the, and the things that are happening in the world, Satan is convincing us as a church that it's God that is mad when it's actually him causing things to happen to people that are ignorant. And so God wants us to know his word. If not, we're going to be constantly afraid. So Luke chapter 2, I'm going to show you this in Luke chapter 2 because when the Lord said there will be all... There will always be conflict in the physical because men are going to be men. Well, somebody said, no, I, I thought that Jesus came to bring peace. No, the Bible did not say he brought peace amongst men. He says he brought peace toward men. That's what we missed. So let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's look at it. So here it is. Here it is. This is Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter 2, verse number 11. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. 
Look at what this text says. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloth. They're talking to the wise men laying in the manger. Now look at this. This is what I'm going after, 13th verse. And suddenly there was in, there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, look at what they said. They said, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Good will toward men. Good will toward men. The angels did not say good will amongst men. It said good will toward men. What does that mean? That means that the, the breach between man and God, the, the, the things that God uh, uh, was wrathful about because of him sending his son, he's no longer. That breach has been, so now there will be peace from God to man. And so now when we hear all of this uh, prophetic word about how angry God is and what he's doing, Jesus is saying very clearly, I am, as he says, I am, I am the savior of the world. I, for this cause I come. Now, in John chapter 10, verse 10, he says, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and destroy. I am come to uh, uh, bring life and it more abundant. So it's not God robbing. It's not God stealing. It is not God killing. It's the thief that has convinced us of the anger of God. So what happens? We believe that that's the sign of God's coming because of this. We believe that this is a sign. This is why the Lord is urgently saying that. Because now is the time for glory to enter the earth. So again, Matthew 24, 3, they ask him three questions. They say to him, when shall these things be? What is the things? The things that you just prophesied in the temple. You were going off on them Pharisees. You're telling them that their house is about to be laid desolate. You, the, you're talking to them about they, them killing the prophets from righteous Abel all the way to Zechariah. What is that? That's their Bible. The Hebrew Bible starts at Abel, ends at Zechariah. He's saying everything. He, he, he's covering this. And then number two, what is the sign of your coming? Again, you've got to research this because too many people are are ignorant in this area. That is not the second coming of Christ. Why? Because they didn't believe he came the first time. And then, of course, the end of the world. We took you to the 36th verse of Matthew 24. Jesus said that not I, not the angels, nobody can tell you when the end of the world be. It's interesting because we have prophets now that saying they know when it's going to happen. So the Lord is saying to us tonight, we got to get focused again. When we hear of the wars that we see, and we're hearing of them, we're talking about China what China is going to do. There was a conflict between the United States. Whoa, this is the time of World War III. Please, my brothers and sisters, don't use this as a moment of ignorance. The Bible just said earthquakes in Dyer's Oh, there was earthquakes. Oh, do you see that? Oh, my God. Here's what the Bible said. This is not the time of the end. These things will happen. This is not a sign that it is the end of the world. We are in a war. But the war is not physical. The war is in the spirit. The war is in the spirit. We are in a spiritual battle. This is what the Lord is urgently blurted. Listen, listen, let me, let me drop this in. Let me drop this in because let me pinpoint what we are afraid of now. Oh, it's going to be tough because China, you know, China got more than uh, that. The, the, China is the sign of the dragon. And the dragon is about, listen to me very carefully. I can take you to Revelation chapter, chapter 12 and drop around the 8th or ninth verse. Jesus declared this because he, a dragon is an imaginary beast. There's, it's not real. It's an imaginary. Jesus referenced Satan in the garden as a serpent. He says that old serpent, that great dragon. In other words, what he's trying to reference and he's, he's, he's so true in his statement. He says in the garden, he started as a serpent. That was over 6,000 years ago in, 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 the, in, in, in the garden, he was a serpent. But now when he gets to revelation, he is a great dragon and he's an imaginary. Wow. That's why in revelation 12, he called him an old serpent because he's lived from the garden in your mind all the way to revelation. And now he's become a great dragon. But he says, I seen Satan cast down. I seen him cast down. I seen him rendered helpless. I seen God take all his power. I seen, I seen him, I seen God, God come in and strip him completely. And then he says, I finished the job. I took the keys to depth, hell, 
and the grave. I took everything from it. So you are afraid of an enemy that's been stripped. He don't even have a house to live in. He's homeless because I took the keys to hell. I took everything from it. But my people are allowing him to live because they don't understand the word of the Lord. So we got to get this down. This is the most important part of our life now is to believe what God is saying. Yes, we're in a battle. Yes, we're in a battle. We're in a spiritual battle. The enemy is using these physical things that we see. This is why the Lord said, turn off the TV if you can't handle it, the news if you can't handle it, because these are distractive tactics from the enemy to cause us to be blind. See, the people that are prophesying are not comparing spiritual things with spiritual things, as 1 Corinthians 2 said. In other words, you don't prophesy out of what you heard on CNN, Fox Network, the New York Times. You got to hear God, because what you see on those things are men's wisdom as the text says first Corinthians 2 these are men's idea they are seeing things they are projecting things they are forecasting things and what we are doing is going in and we are following I remember when we were talking about the season a few years back of blood moons I heard the prophet say that uh, uh, NASA said NASA said that there's going to be a season and we began to prophesy on the blood moon because we didn't understand watch this watch this this is too important to the miss the blood moon is not the moon being red a blood moon is actually the moon of blood in the scripture i'm gonna say it again for those of uh, of us are listening to the blood moon prophetic words when jesus heard these disciples say to him show us a sign in heaven a blood moon he says i got a sign for you it's the sign of jonah jonah why is he saying this to them because we interpreted them to ask them from a sign from god well, Jesus knew, you're not asking me from a, for a sign from God. You're asking me about an astrology event. You're asking me for a numerology event. And I'm going to rebuke you because I'm not into astrology. Because that came out of the Babylonian system. That, that was constructed in that system, the alternative or the acceptable substitution. So when they said, give me a sign, they were not talking about from God. They were saying, the blood moon, show us how in the stars, how this is going to predict something. And he says, you are a, a lunatic. In other words, lunar meaning moon. This is a problem that you have. And so we got to get this because we are, our hearts are failing because we don't understand. We are in the spiritual battle. What the enemy is doing, he's using these physical happening. He's using these physical happen to confuse and to convince the believer that these are signs of the coming of the Lord now. Get you, get ready because we're about to be taken out of here. I know some people are scared, but I'm not because I know the scripture. The glory of God is about to invade the earth and the enemy want to convince us that it's not going to happen. He wants us to be scared. He wants the believer who is responsible for carrying the glory to be scared and be uninformed. We are hearing the prophetic community prophesy from it. And the saints are now, now here's what is really interesting to me. The saints are praying that these things be what these things have been told them to be. Out of, out of, out of, out of, I'm telling you, the saints are praying. Why? Because they think everything is happening right now is the prerequisite to the rapture. And God is going to take us out of this tribulation. I'm ready to go home and be with the Lord. Well, I'm sorry. He's not rescuing you out of something that he has commissioned you to take care of. That's why we're here. He, we are here to govern this earth. I'm going to say it again. The saints are listening to this. The saints are grabbing hold to this, thinking it's a prerequisite to the rapture that would take them out of their great, take them out of the great tribulation. When God says your obligation is to be here. Because I have given you dominion. The Father has placed us here to intercede. Are you listening? To intercede. To intercede. So the Lord has not given us an escape out of our responsibility in the earth. Uh, listen, listen. The, the reason why the Father is so urgent about this now, I'm going to tell you again, is because of the revealed glory that is going to happen. And if the glory carriers is not in place and they don't have the right information and revelation, God had to do this to some prophets in the scripture to make sure their mind was aligned with what he was trying to do in them. Do you know that in first uh, Samuel chapter 16, this is biblical. This is, this is God. God has done this before. God is doing it now. He had to correct Samuel, the prophet that prophesied. The Bible says in chapter three of his book, first Samuel, 
He said he prophesied 40 years and not one word fell to the ground. In other words, everything he said came to pass. But if you read in 1 Samuel chapter 16, he was in jeopardy of, of, of messing up his record. How? Because he goes to the house of Jesse under the direction of God and he gets to the house of Je Jesse. He sees Jesse's oldest son, the strong son, and he pulls out his horn of oil and got ready to put him on and the Lord says, stop. You are about to mess up something because you are looking with your eyes. I don't govern by the eyes. I don't care what's going on in the world. I'm not dealing with you based out of what I see. I'm telling you to hear me because what you see might not be in line with what I'm saying, Samuel. So you're about to mess up your record. We got to get this. I am afraid that there's too many prophets right now that are prophesying out of what they see. This would be convenient. This will cause me to build a brand. This is inevitable. This can't fail. This is what's going to happen. And God says, I'm switching. We saw this happen just a few years back in an election where every prophet that could prophesy was prophesying a certain man in office. And God says, I'm not obligated to that. Y'all trying to prophesy out of what you feel and what you see. I'm not necessarily obligated to any of what you feel or what you see. Uh, many thought that they had the governance of God and they, because we are the elite, God is going to do what we say. He came in and showed you. I'm not doing any of the stuff that you say. I'm only going to do what you say and you will be a true prophet if you say what I'm saying, not what you see. And so we see this in the scripture. We are in that time right now. The glory of God is coming to his people and we got to know this. If not, we're going to miss again the signs of God that are here for us. This is urgent on the heart of God. He's done this before. He's done this before. Satan is trying to gain control. Listen to me. If you didn't hear nothing else, Satan is trying to gain control by keeping the children of light in darkness. Listen to me. This is the tactic of the enemy. It is to keep the people that are supposed to carry the light in darkness. Darkness is a picture of the, the failed information. There is no revelation, illumination, information. That's what darkness is the signification of. That's why when we see in, in a, a, a 2 Corinthians 10, Verse 5, it's all talking about darkness or, or spiritual weakness in high places. The darkness of Satan's ignorance upon the people that's supposed to carry the light. This is his tactic. This will always be his tactic. is to keep the children of light in darkness through teachings from people that they trust that is ill-informed. And so it's causing us to be ill-informed. So it causes us to be apprehensive because we don't know the heart of God. We'll just listen to somebody that we think know the heart of God. This is a season that is change. God's people are kept in captivity because of the ignorance. I'm going to read a passage of scripture to you. Man, this just absolutely blew me away because the Lord says, here's the tactic of the enemy. In, in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13, look at what the scripture says, Isaiah chapter 5, because darkness is the tactic of the enemy to keep the people of God in a place that they are afraid so they won't walk in the promise, so the glory of God won't fill the earth as God has intended. That's the only thing that can stop it, is those of us that are supposed to be the glory carers don't understand what God is up to. Look at this, uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 5, verse number 13. Look at what it says. Therefore, my people, the children of light, therefore, my people are going into captivity. Why are they in captivity? Because they have no knowledge. And they're, look at this, and their honorable men, the men that they honor, are famished. And their multitudes dried up with thirst. And their multitudes dried up with thirst. Look at that. Now look at this 14th verse. Therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their glory and their multitude and their pomp and circumstance they're pumped and and he hath rejoiced shall descend into it do you see what this text is saying this is the tactic of the enemy god's people have 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 perished have have failed have gone into captivity why Be because of the lack of knowledge now that's interesting because we have more television programs we have more social media programs that are quote unquote preaching and the Bible says my people are perishing because of the lack of knowledge. My people are being destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. Now, now listen, listen to what it said. Therefore, hell has in 
enlarge itself? Why is hell getting so big? And why are people going to hell? Why is this urgent on the God heart? It's because of the lack of knowledge. We have no control against it. We're putting people in jeopardy. We're putting people in their lives are literal. You have you have men now that are that are that are hearts are, are, are fearful because they don't know what God is up to. Because they don't they, they can't grasp it because listen, listen, our word don't support it. Our word don't support it. Our word don't support it. We're still trying to have good church. We're still just trying to make sure that we have sensationalism. And nothing wrong with sensationalism. Nothing. I was I came out of it. I'm telling you, I know it. But here's what the Lord said. I am ready for my people to hear revelation because I'm ready for my glory to come in the earth. Listen, 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 listen. Every time we hear the word glory, we think about a shout. We think about the devil don't care about that. We think about gifts. The devil don't care about that. He loves it. Be gifted. Shout. But I need you to stay ignorant so that you can produce and birth ignorant people that don't know where I am. That will constantly tell my people that it's no use. It's no use. You might as well give up because it's the, it's the end time and, and it's just over. It's just over. And we we give up on our dreams. We give up on, on what God says. Most of the people now are, are people that have given up. It's any day now. The Lord's going to take us out. We're going home to glory. That's the conversation. The glory, thou kingdom come, thou will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God says he's trying to bring it to earth. He's trying to bring his glory into earth. Now, here's the question. Here's the question. Will you be a glory carrier? Will you be a glory carrier? I, uh, we're in a spiritual battle right now. It's the battle of our life. Now, when I say life, I'm not talking about physical death. I'm talking about the glorious life that God has desired for us to uh, 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 live. We got to get prepared for this. And the Lord is opening up his word again. Now, this is going to be rejected by many because we're trying to have a good old revival. That means that I want to keep it like it is and I want you to rekindle what I remember back in 1985 where there was a great revival. And it's interesting that our greatest uh, a desire is to go back when God says there's so much more. And God says what we are about to experience uh, can't Nothing can compare to it. He's saying, I'm opening up doors and I'm ready to do it now, but I need people that are ready for this to happen. But we got to be prepared. You're going to have to ask the Lord to, 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 to Lord, come in. I, I really. I release my title. I release who I think I am to come into what you desire in me to be. I want to be what you want me to be. And so that's going to infringe upon some people's ego because you, you, it's just, it's just difficult because you think that the Lord is trying to strip you and make you look small in front of people. Well, here's what you got to say, Lord, whatever it takes for me to be in compliance with you, here I am. I want to be used. I want the glory. I want the glory. I'm not just a shout. Not just a shout, not just a gift. Gifts and callings are without repentance. We're talking about things that free people. We're, we're talking about things that bring the masses into God. We're talking about things that causes the, the, the people that have been struggling with addiction for years. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. Only God can do that. It's not just us coming, bringing them in, and they fall out. Oh, that's it. Let's take a picture of that and tell everybody that how many people came in. No, this is talking about a true deliverance. This is going to happen only when we get into compliance with God. I'm an avid, I'm an avid, we gotta be prepared. I'm an avid, I'm an avid, I'm a huge fan of the UFC. What is that? The ultimate fighting. I, I am such a fan of it that I sometimes can't go to sleep when I need to be asleep watching these matches. I love it so much. I'm a boxing fan as well. But I was watching a rerun of an episode last night. The Lord showed me this. The Lord showed me this in, in our time of preparation. I was watching a rematch. I, I mean, a re. Uh, they were replaying the Ultimate Fighting Championship where they brought all these young men in, big, strong, stout young men in to try out to be a gladiator, if you will. And at the end of the training, they gave them uh, uh, professional fighters to train them. And they was going to all fight each other. And the last man standing would be uh, in the, uh, uh, introduced into the UFC and he would get a title fight. 
right? Now, what this meant to those young men, your life is about to change drastically just by your skills and your gift and, and your ability. This is an opportunity for you to change your life by this. And so I was watching that last night. And and I was watching them as they brought in several potential people that could actually, that they believed that these people would be great. They are, they, they, their physical specimen is, is, is in line. They, they got it going on. It looked as if they could win. Now, listen to me. I watched them. I never watched this before, but to, last night I watched the beginning of it. They had some ex, ex NFL players, some people that was sculptures, some men that had muscles. And they were, they went through the training period and they were saying, man, this is boy, this is a tough, I didn't know that this uh, training was tough. This is nothing that I've experienced before. Now I'm talking people that were ex uh, football players, ex uh, people that was athletic. They went into this training for this ultimate fighting experience. And, and, and as they began to be matched up with the opposite team, I, I, I was watching this. And these people that were supposed to be gifted, supposed to be athletes that were supposed to do, they were, they were tapping out w within a minute of the fight. Now, these, these, this fight lasts two five-minute rounds. That's only 10 minutes. They were tapping out. They were fatigued in one minute. I'm looking at this and saying to myself, I can't believe I can't believe that football player. I can't believe that track player. I can't believe these people are, are tapping out so fast. How dare them? Their, their coaches was disappointed. Like, I can't believe you look like you were the one. Oh, I thought that you were the one. When I looked at that, the Lord said that, the Lord began to share that with me. He says, look at that. This is how my people are in this battle that we're in because they are, they are under trained. They have not, they look like them. they got gifts. They, they, people would think they got the tongues. They got all of the things that would say that one is ready. That one is ready. But he says, look at them. They are tapping out because my people are perishing because they got a gift. They got to look, but they don't have the knowledge to even fight in this war. They have not been equipped for this level of, of, of spiritual warfare. They have not been equipped. They have not been equipped. They, 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 they watch their people bow down to them because of their reverence. But the devil ain't bowing down because he knows that if you don't have knowledge about the word and revelation of the Lord's word in time, you are disqualified. He disregards. That's why we are shouting. We're blurting out things and we see no manifestation or no, re no result. It's because of our lack of knowledge. Now, the Lord has given us this opportunity. He's given us this opportunity in this season. He's saying, yes, I am ready now. I am ready now. And those of you that heard this word on tonight, he says he's ready. He's ready. He's ready to bust a move. He's ready to do it through you. All of this distractive information that we're getting from people that don't understand the times that we're in. He says, you're going to have to be disciplined enough to close your ears to all of this prophetic word just to get you distracted just to get you distracted. I know we are gift seekers. I know we desire. I know we, that's when we have in churches and when we can have somebody come in and call our name, our address and all of that stuff. And that's wonderful. I'm familiar with it, but we're on another level of warfare. Now it's only going to be the revelation of God. It's only going to us be in time. Listen to me. Listen to me. There is the word of the Lord for now. We can't, we keep missing this because we are traditionally taught, no, God don't change and he don't, but his word and revelation, he says, has been hidden from generation to generation and he's releasing it now. There's a word for right now that the Lord is releasing and we are refusing to hear. This is why we can be so greatly deceived in such a moment. The enemy can cause our eyes like we're like babies. Everything you dangle in front of him gets their attention. That's what we're doing. There's so many things he's dangling in front of us. We're, we're running out. We're running, we're, we're running after. And the Lord says, no, I'm ready for my people to hear. I want to pray tonight because I believe that this is the time of God's glory being released into our lives like never before. I believe that we are going to see. I, I, I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you. 
you are listening to me and the enemy almost convinced you to accept what you have been accepting. He's, he's telling you, you are not, you are not the one. When, when you hear of God doing great things, uh, you just disregard your life is not, you were not born in that. You were born to be second or third. You were born to be a person of trouble. You were born a, a person to just accept the mishaps in life. You were born, you and your children, you and your children, you know, y'all just, y'all second class, third class. So just accept what the enemy is giving to you. I'm here to stand with you on tonight to tell you that the devil is a lie. He, no, no, he's, he's not just a lie. He is the father of lies. In other words, he's a professional liar. He knows what to lie to you about that will get your attention and cause you to embrace it. He knows when to send somebody that you trust to a cosign on his lie. He knows this. You've been falling for it. You've been falling. But the word of the Lord has come to you tonight to tell you, you won't be distracted by it no longer. You won't be listening no longer. You're going to believe God because he's promised you something. And you're going to say, God, I will stand on it because I believe that you are going to perform it. That's what you're going to do. You're going to believe God for this particular season in your life. You're going to hear the word of the Lord. You're going to get revelation from the Lord that validates who you are in him. Your best days are about to show up. You have not experienced it yet. I don't care how many good things you've had happen. You have not experienced your best days because the glory of God has not been revealed on a level that he's about to reveal it on. And you are a glory carrier. Let's pray together on tonight. Father, we thank you so much for your word and for this time in your word. I thank you, Father, for those that heard this word on tonight that's going to dare to believe. I might have been in a mess my entire life, but tonight, tonight, I grab a hold to faith, God. I pray right now your grace is released upon your people to grab a hold to faith, God, and to believe when other people people hearts are failing their belief is failing god i believe that there's a people that you're raising up that is hearing your word that's going to stand on your word and god the world will know that it's you because of who it is that's standing up people that have never stood up before is standing because they have heard the word they are the sheep that hear your voice they're the sheep that's been rejected as you were jesus it did the the the, the the, the stone that the builders rejected is now becoming the centerpiece. And there are people that have been rejected that, God, you are using as your centerpiece to, in, to introduce your glory in this earth. And God, we believe together, your glory will be revealed. Your glory will be revealed in the earth. And God, I thank you for gracing me to carry your glory. So let me be a light to everyone that is in darkness. God, fill my heart and mind with your word so that I can speak words of faith that, that God encourage people to lift them up no matter what they are being challenged by. God, give us the word to say into that heart that starts that heart to believing again and to trust you again. We thank you for it. God, forgive us. Forgive us. Repent with me tonight. Father, forgive me for everything I've done that did not bring you glory. Every sin in my life, I ask you, forgive me now. God, I want to be clean before you. I want my life to be honorable before you in all that I do. In private, God, let me honor you in private. Don't let me be a God person in the public, but God, give me honor in the dark times and in the long times. Thank you so much for your forgiving power and your recovery power. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you guys so much. Uh, uh, share this, even, even if you're just coming on, uh, you can go and share this later. This will be up on our YouTube page uh, later. Pastor G, Pastor G at Network uh, Believers. We've been having some technical difficulties, so we were not able to broadcast it on our uh, YouTube page, and we've been trying to do Instagram and all of those things. Pray for us that we get all those things together. But this will be on our YouTube page uh, following tonight's, uh, when I end tonight. So again, 
if you know someone that's not on social media because everybody's not there, you can actually go to my YouTube page, look up. I got six years of video last night, Sundays. I, I, it's I endeavor to give you the word of the Lord to build your heart and faith so that you can trust God for your next season. I got six years of word at my YouTube page, Pastor G at Network of Believers. I hope that you will subscribe. Hope that you'll subscribe. I hope that you will repost this. You will make a comment. I need the algorithms of Facebook to understand that this word is relevant and is needed. You can help me do that. You can be a digital evangelist by doing that. If you would go and be diligent, say, I'm going to share this. I'm going to help this word get out to people. You, you will be blessed for it. Blessed are the feet of those that share the gospel of good news. Not the ones that are actually having to speak it, but those that would share it. You are actually the sharer of the gospel. And God's going to bless you for it. You're going to see the hand of God come up on your life because you made it happen for others. God will actually make it happen for you. Amen. It's going to happen for you. Now, for those of you that tonight you say, I want to help uh, network of believers. I, I, I want to uh, sow into network of believers. There you go. There you go. That's our cash app. That's our cash app. That's our, you know, anybody that's sown into us know that we are fertile ground. We are fertile ground. And, and, and we believe that God has uh, mandated us to do something great this year. Your seed will help us do just that. I'm so thankful to the Lord. I'm thankful for you. This is the year of the underdogs. If you've been an underdog, get ready, suit up, because it's your time to get in the game. I am thankful, thankful, thankful. 6 a.m. in the morning, meet Lady T right here. Meet Lady T, 6 a.m. Teresa Divine Whitmore for Eat. Early affirmation with Lady T. What she does is give you affirmation, things to say to get your day started off well. Uh, we, we done left our excuse season. We're in the season of glory and the season of grace. And God loves you more than you can even fathom. He loves you. He's wrapping you in, in his arms because he loves you. If nobody else loves you, God does. Amen. Amen. And ain't nothing you can uh, do about it. Who I have on here tonight. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, Sylvia Wilson, blessings to you, Sylvia. Blessings, uh, Camille uh, uh, Miller. Blessings, Camille Miller. Pastor Tanya, David Boyd, blessings. We had a, a, a wonderful time at our Mississippi location, Jehovah Shaman, Network of Believers, Mississippi, Jehovah Shaman. Blessings to Pastor David and Tanya Boyd. They were seed sowing people. I, I, man, they are, are such blessed people. They've been a blessing to Lady T and I. Blessings to you, boy. Uh, uh, so Sonia Pettis, blessings to you. Monica Jones, uh, blessings. Monica was at Network of Believers, and uh, uh, she was on today as well. Let's check out Monica Jones. Uh, uh, who, who else is in the house? Of course, my mother is in the house. My biological mother, Adam A. Whitmore, blessings to her. 80, well... Let me see, this is uh, uh, February, March, April, April 10th, 88 years old. Blessings, that's a blessing. Uh, uh, joyful, Clary, Standing Strong, blessings on blessings. Letha Prunty, blessings on blessings. Tammy Atman, willing blessing. Priscilla Jones, who, 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 the shirt, this is my shirt from. This is Priscilla, I bounce back bunny. Thank God for her uh, uh, blessings. CJ Nichols, blessings, man, blessings. See you guys tomorrow, CJ Nichols, blessings. Uh, Pastor, Apostle Rodney Henderson. Blessings to you, brother. Blessings, blessings. Uh, Anita Cunningham. Blessings, Anita Scott. Anita, blessings, Anita. That's family right there. Uh, who else? Who else? I like to call people names because I, I, I appreciate you being here. Uh, uh, Sharon Holmes. Blessings, Sharon Holmes. Blessings. Blessings. Um, let me see. Let me make sure I don't miss somebody. Cora Walker. Blessings. Mississippi. Cora's one of our, our Mississippi people. Blessings, Cora. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, Minister Von Telly, a networker at heart. I'm telling you, Minister Von Telly, blessings to you, man. Felita Finley, blessings. I need Felita Finley to call me after this is over. Blessings. Now, let me see. Did I get everybody? I think I did. All right. Now, I start with a prophetic word. Katrina Robinson, blessings, Korea. John Johnson, Blessings. Lakeisha Aldrich, Aldrich Johnson. Blessings. Y'all need to check out Lakeisha Aldrich as well. That's a blessing to the, the body of Christ. Check her out. Lakeisha Aldrich Johnson. Blessings. Uh, who else is in here? That's it. That's it. 
Thank you so much. Now, I start with a prophetic word. Remember, if you want to uh, sow your seed, you can go back and look at this thing. But, hey, hey, guys, look, look here. You got to be determined that you're going to be determined to be determined that you're going to be blessed. You're going to do and, and everything that God has told you to do. You won't hold back. No matter who don't see it and don't like it, you will not shortchange God in, when it relates to your greatness. You, the world deserves you right now. So come on, let's do this. Let's do this. All right. All right. Again, I start with a prophetic word. I'm going in with one. Blessings on 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 blessings.